Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to dick around with some industrial automation. Now, you say industrial automation, automatically you think robots and lasers, old musky making power wheels, remote controls for the Holly Weird set. Bullshit, says I. The borscht and vodka of small, heavy industry is dirt, cheap, and dumb. Pneumatics, hydraulics, and electrical actuators. Nothing fancy. Super cheap to implement and super easy to get your meat hooks around. That which, uh, that which is done is that which shall be done. There is no new thing under the sun. And I posit to you some industrial Lego. There is no new thing under the sun. You'll be walking around somewhere and you'll see somebody doing a monotonous, horrific fucking job. Like pulling a lever or same shit, different pile. Moving pile of shit A to pile of shit B. There is no reason for a sentient being to be doing that kind of mind-numbing drudgery. Here's where you come in. If and you recognize that the, there is nothing new under the sun, as it, uh, it was written in the Bible, there is nothing new under the sun, you get yourself your head around industrial Lego. Everything is Lego. It's just finding the right bits what go together. So this is one of those bits. This will put a person, thankfully, out of a job because a thinking person is never out of a job. If you are solving problems day in, day out, doing things in a better way, you will always have a fucking job partner. So instead of some poor schlub pulling a lever to punch holes in cardboard or to punch out uh, silver uh, nuggets or any kind of thing, like stupid, stupid stuff, you can use a pneumatic actuator to do that. And I'm going to show you how to control the pneumatic actuator, mold it to your will to get it to do what you want. This is essentially a one-axis robot in the palm of your hand. So we have an aluminum pneumatic cylinder threaded on the blind end, threaded on the gland end, a little of the old in, out, in, out. Defined stroke, essentially we feed in a pressurized fluid, in this case the fluid is air, which is a compressible fluid. A fluid does not mean liquid, for fuck's sakes people. Fluid means something that conforms to the shape of whatever is holding it in. So. Air is a fluid. What we have here is a solution to a problem, but we don't have an actual problem. And this is what you run into, of course, at school, is you have all this kind of busy work. And further to school, guys are asking if in, I, I could not swear. Absolutely, I can quit swearing if my daughter or wife or son comes into the shop. But it's just us girls here dicking around with some industrial Lego. So if, if and you want me to do your job for you, uh, go fuck your hat. What I was getting to is I have an actual problem what needs solving. And that's the thing, is you identify the problem and then you try and piece together the Lego bits that will solve that problem without seven having some, some lever monkey, you know, work <laughs> his entire career pulling a fucking lever, which is just soul crushing. So this is the problem. I need to actuate a cylinder fast on the outstroke, on the uh, destruct, no, and slowly retract on the instroke. That's the extend stroke, sorry. I need that to just whip right out of there, come flying out of there, and then I need it to come back nice and slow. So the easiest way to do that action is to, uh, to, to attach a valve. This is a toggle valve what allows air to flow to either end. And, and looking at this, air goes in the bottom, and when you flip it over here, air goes over to this port. So we could actuate that way. But then the problem is it locks the air in in the bottom. So if we have pressure, I, let me draw you a drawing here. On account of this coming out of the bag of tricks, I didn't have a schematic for it, so I pulled the old, uh, <laughs> the old fluid Sherlock Holmes routine with the magnet frying glass. In this case, it's a blowgun with a soft receptacle tip where you can jam in holes and see where it blows out of. So uh, I mapped this all out, blew in the bottom with the, it in the center position, blocked right off. These ports 
go to the exhaust. You blast air in here, it comes out the exhaust. You blast air in here, it comes out the exhaust. You switch it over, air goes in the bottom, out here, and air from in here comes out the exhaust, but it does not come out the exhaust on this side. The obverse is correct when the toggle is in that position, comes out of here, or whatever, you know, but blocks off the exhaust. What that gives us is a three position valve, and if we map it, map it out diagrammatically here, we got the uh, monkey lever over here in the center position. The pressure is blocked off and both sides of the cylinder are free to exhaust. That's what they call float. This will float. No, that could be a tandem. No, uh, that's a float feature. So it, this cylinder will move wherever the hell it wants to move. If there's a weight on it, it'll fuck right off. Or if there's something pushing it back in, it'll, it'll go back in. That'll come up here momentarily. If there's something pushing on it, it'll go back in. That's a convenient feature, especially for pneumatics. That doesn't work with uh, hydraulics, but it works with pneumatics. Then if we toggle the, uh, the valve over, we get pressure in the one side and the other side exhaust that allows us to extend the cylinder and if we pull the toggle all the way over the other way we swap those lines and we get uh, this pressure exhaust and this this pressure goes into the gland end and retracts the rod that's how the thing works so we're gonna hook it up and I'll, I'll show you how that uh, how that's gonna work now I got some polyethylene line. This is great for prototyping. It comes in different sizes. You see this all over the place because it's so geezless easy. No dicking around. And the push lock fittings are great as well. Um, they, they they seal up and they um, they bite right on there, so they don't come out unless you pull. A lot of times they don't come out at all. But you got to sort of pull and tweak it around. But once it gets full of schmoo, it's a different story. But they're super good for prototyping, long story short. Now just for tits and pickles, I've added a gauge to that. And we'll just get her connected up here. Now because air is a compressible fluid, it's quite violent when it lets go. And there's always one or two lines what didn't get connected just because it was 15 minutes before 15 minutes to coffee break. So. Uh, I like to uh, engage my safety squints in addition, you know, belt and suspenders type that I is. Add a little of uh, the handyman's secret weapon just to our test bench here. Safety's off. We are go for launch. We make sure that that is in the neutral position and we actuate. Never run this so you don't know what's going to happen. Just be careful. Anytime you first hook the thing up, we got about 80 psi. Seems to be working good. Bed goes up, bed goes down, bed goes up, bed goes down, bed goes up. Okay, so we got this thing chooching back and forth. However, we're only halfway there because as I said, I need this to fire out quick and then retract nice and slow. We have to add a component. Now the amount of pressure we put into the cylinder gives us the force. We have the pressure in here times the effective area of the piston. That gives us the output force. But of course that doesn't control the speed. The speed of actuation is controlled by the flow. And in order to change the speed of actuation, you don't control pressure. You don't do any pressure reducing valve, nothing like that. Nothing to do with pressure. You gotta control the flow. How do you control the flow? the flow control valve. A flow control valve is very simple. It's a needle valve that has on the one side a check, a ball check. So air can come in here, it can, it can blast in here as fast as it wants and actuate quickly that way. But when you want air to exhaust, it can't go past the, the ball seat here. So the, the ball seats, the check ball seats, blocks off, has to go through the needle valve here. So we can adjust that needle valve. Now the flow going out of the back side of the cylinder, we could do it two ways, but this is the best way to do it. We could throttle the flow in to the retract end of the cylinder, the gland end, so that we slowly pressurize this. But the best way to do it is to eliminate jerkiness is to throttle the flow out of the reverse side of the cylinder. 
Now you do this in pneumatics, no problem. But if you do this in hydraulics, you gotta think about it because there's a difference in the effective area. If you pressurize, say you're throttling the flow out of this cylinder on this side, if you pressurize this, say you're pressurizing at uh, 5,000 PSI, all of a sudden you're gonna get way more pressure depending on the size of the rod. You could get 10,000 PSI on this end. So you gotta be a little bit careful, but we're talking pneumatics here. Doesn't make a lick of difference on the pressure side. But in this case, for nice smooth actuation, we want to throttle the flow out of the reverse side that we're pressurizing. So we want it to come back in slowly. That means we're going to throttle the flow, the exhaust flow, from the back end of this cylinder with the flow control valve. Now we snap that in in the correct orientation. There's a little diagram on here which shows us where the check ball is and that is the incorrect. <laughs> we want it to check on the flow coming out. That ball's got to jam up against the seat there and then go through the needle valve side of things. So we'll do that and a little bit tighter there. That's okay. That's why dog, she made erasers. And demonetized. Once again for the second time. Contact. Now we'll actuate here. Pops out. We'll actuate the other way. Doesn't move. We'll allow some of that flow to leak out. And that is just about perfect. Very nice. Perfect. Okay, so that solves the problem of pulling the lever, but the thing is now, well, it's an easier job to flip the switch. Ah, for fuck all. There we go. At least the power didn't go up. So as I was saying, you make a job physically easier and it's going to get done more efficiently. This old school thinking of, you know, you can't have people sit down on the job, you can't, it, fucking bullshit. The easier you make the job, the faster and more productively it's going to get done. Also, there'd be less errors and less, it's just, it's just better. You, you don't got to make the guys suffer. Okay, so now instead of pulling the lever we are actuating a toggle to pull that lever. But what if we don't even want to pull a lever? What if we want to completely automate the process? Maybe it's, or maybe, well, we could put this in a bigger cylinder. Let's put this in a bigger cylinder and see what happens because we need more force. We can't change the pressure here. We're maxed out at pressure. We still need more force out of it. What do we need? We need more effective area that means we need a bigger cylinder. Let's try a bigger cylinder. All right, now we're cooking with cocaine. Uh, you see what we're doing here is we need more force like this, you know, what is this? 20, yeah, 20 millimeter bore, so that's three quarter. So this will put out 50 pounds at 100 PSI. This guy, this guy is uh, three inches, three inches at 100, that's 700 pounds at 100 PSI. Say 800 pounds, you crank her up a little bit. That's a whole lot different. You, you ain't going to get 800 pounds of force out of a human being or even a human doing all day, every day. This thing, <laughs> 50, maybe 100 bucks for uh, a super duper brand. I mean, cheap as chips and just incredible amounts of force. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the same circuit, all the same valving. And we're just going to get more force out of it, changing the actuator. Contact. Okay. Now we'll come back. That's a little fast. Try that again. It's fast. Well, pretty slow actuation. That's okay. Well, this is actually going into, actually, literally going into a machine. So we will. Sorry. We'll let the piss in air. This is actually going into a machine, uh, uh, a mechanical cutting machine, and it needs to be faster than that, so we will need bigger lines, but as I said, this is a little bit slow, but this is the proof of concept. 
in order to get faster, we need more flow. In order for more flow, we need bigger lines and bigger valves. Here's the thing though, I'm still manually making the thing chooch. What if I don't want to manually make the thing chooch? What if I want it fully automated? I got to pay a guy to <laughs> sit his entire career flipping a lever. It doesn't make a sense. So what we do is we get two birds stoned with one bush. We use an air valve. What's got higher flow, higher flow equals faster. And it's electrically controlled. So now, instead of this little toggle switch, we can have an electric switch. Yay! What the fuck is the difference? Here's the difference. Instead of an electric switch, we can, we can get, instead of a human toggling the electric switch, we can get a confuser to toggle the electric switch. In the next video, we are going to amalgamate what they call system integrate <laughs> this valve into a click programmable logic controller in order to get this thing chooching nice and fast on the extend and nice and slow on the retract automatically. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice. Good morning, boys and girls. Today we're doing the Matic cylinders. <laughs> Did this start? Oh, this painted? Yeah, I painted it. It's it's um laboratory grade almond.